everyone, it's Allison with Bloom Culture Flowers. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about how to make a floral hair comb. First, I start out with my paddle wire and I cut a long piece so that I'm able to thread it through the tines of the bridal comb. I do this so that it adds some extra stability whenever we connect it to the backing. Next you'll want to cut down the wire to a little bit more of a manageable length and then you'll want to get your backing here. I've used an old business card but you can use extra packaging, cardstock, just something that's firm and sturdy but yet flexible. You'll want to run a generous bead of glue along the inside of your backing. I load it up and then this way whenever I connect it to the wire, the wire will be enclosed and then the backing will glue to itself. I cross the wires and make sure that they're in the hot glue, um, sometimes giving them a crisscross, but just kind of shoving them down in there and making sure that they're completely submerged in the glue. Once it has set up and dried, you'll want to trim down any excess wire. And then I also like to run a bead of glue along the top of the floral comb where that paddle wire is and connect the base of your backing. That way it's firm and sturdy and you know it's not going anywhere. Next, you'll want to start to add in your greenery and your floral. I run a very generous bead of glue along my backing and I let that set up for a few minutes before I start to add any floral components onto it. You'll want to have some glue on the back of your greenery and your floral. That way they will stick to the glue that's on the backing. A wet floral glue acts like rubber cement in that it sticks to itself. So once the leaves have had a little bit of time for the glue to set up on them, I place them on the backing and I want to make sure that most of the edges are covered. I want to hide that rough edge at the top of the backing as well. So here I'll cut down some of our salal leaves. Once I've got most of my backing covered with the broadleaf salal, I'll move on to a more textural greenery like the leather leaf that we're using here. Sometimes I'll come in and add that in layers underneath the salal, making or creating a really pretty shape with the greenery. I also try to cover up the base of my floral comb where the backing meets the paddle wire that we wired it to. This way there are no hard edges and you can kind of cover up all of your mechanics. You also want to make sure that your backing is completely covered, but we have a lot of flowers to place here that can cover that up. Once you've got all of your foundational greenery placed, you'll want to move on. Here I've started with some spray roses and I typically use smaller scale flowers like spray roses. We've got Hypericum Gary here. I like to use smaller scale flowers just because it seems to match more of the scale of the smaller floral comb. Remember to add your glue to your floral components as well so that way they have the ability to stick to the glue that's already on the backing. Next, I'll move on to some of our spray roses. I like to clean up any wilted or chewy petals. You also want to clean up any of the stems that are on the base of the rosebud. I also like to cut the base of the spray rose at an angle. That way the angled flat part has a great place to sit on the foundation of your floral comb. I add in a dollop of cold glue on the base of the flower. I let that set up for a few minutes before I place it onto the floral comb. Next, I'm gonna move on to some other detail pieces. I love to use Hypericum Berry. It comes in a, an assortment of colors and really is a great scale difference to a lot of the detail components that we make. I'll add a little bit of glue on the stem of the Hypericum Berry, let that set up for a few seconds, and then go ahead and place it on the base of the comb. 
Moving on, I'll layer in some more of our spray roses. I like to use a variety of sizes on the spray roses, maybe a bloom that's a little more open, contrasted with a bloom that's a little bit tighter. This way it helps with variety and scale and just add some interest to your piece. We will do the same thing to this rosebud. You want to take off all the excess greenery, all of the wilted or chewy petals underneath and get it ready and cleaned up for the floral glue. If you want to do a test run and make sure that it's where you want it to be, I highly recommend that without the glue so that it's not as messy in case you change your mind. But you'll want to play with the placement here and once you've decided on that, give it some floral glue and then place it where you want it. Once you've got your two main blooms placed, I'll start to add in some of the smaller pieces or components. I like to save a lot of the really tight closed buds from the spray roses and use those as detail pieces in floral combs, corsages, and boutonnieres. Do a couple of test runs with the placement of your buds and that's when I would put the glue on and then place it permanently. But I like to place it in a few different areas to make sure um, I like the placement of it, that the color looks good there. So I give it a test run before I place it. You will want to trim the stems down and then place a small bead of glue on the stems and then insert your stem where you want it to be on your floral comb. Next, I'm going to continue layering in with some of our smaller pieces. Here, I've used chamomile. It can also be called feverfew. I like to start with our larger blooms like the spray roses and work down in size from the hypericum berry to some of the rosebuds to some of these really small blooms. I feel like it just helps with my philosophy of designing in layers and then you can start with your bigger layers and then move on to your smaller layers which would be considered the chamomile and then some of these detailed pieces like I'm about to use. I'm going to play with the placement of the astrantia that I'm working with right now. Again, don't be afraid to do a test run before you commit to putting glue on the stem and then placing it for good. Okay, now that we are getting close to the finished and final product, I'll go through and look at my floral comb to see if there are any holes or any gaps between the flowers and the backing or just between the flowers and themselves. And I like to add in these detailed components. Maybe there are a few small leftover leaves, a few small leftover rosebuds or hypericum berry buds. And I'll just go in and add these final details that just give it one final layer. I like to continue on with all of the small elements until all of the holes or gaps in between the flowers have been filled. And you wanna make sure that you cover up all of your mechanics, such as your glue and your paddle wire. And that completes our floral comb tutorial. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or you can email us at hello at bloomcultureflowers.com.